All my life, I've heard talk about the end of the world. I've said a lot myself about something called the return of Jesus. But it has always been something out there. Far enough into the future that it doesn't make much difference whether I have it right or not. Yet I am experiencing something at the moment that I think millions, if not billions of people on earth are experiencing with me. We come from vastly different backgrounds, but there is this same sense of impending doom happening all over the world. We could blame it on COVID. Billions of people have had our lives upended through lockdowns and other effects of this insidious disease. It's not as bad as either the Black Plague or the Spanish Flu were, but the population of the world has been able to grasp the enormity of what is happening now, much more than people were able to grasp it back before we had the mass media. So the psychological fallout from COVID-19 is much greater than that of either of the other two great pandemics. I personally do not think that this present pandemic is going to destroy the world. It won't even decimate the world. But it has at least focused our attention on events that could affect everyone on the planet. And there are other, other more serious reasons for people feeling that something is very wrong too. Remember what was happening just before the coronavirus broke out? The whole world was getting worked up about climate change especially as massive forest fires were blazing in unprecedented numbers all over the planet. Thousands of plant and animal species have been wiped out already through global warming, and some people fear it might even lead to the extinction of human life. The threat from climate change is much bigger than that of COVID-19. The global warming threat is still going to be here when COVID has been reduced to the level of the common cold. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Climate experts from all over the world see global warming as a much more serious emergency than COVID-19 and the other two great plagues combined. It just isn't so immediately confronting as has been the deaths of more than 2 million people over the last 12 months. However, there is another threat that I am convinced is both more immediate and more dangerous to human life than either COVID-19 or climate change. And that is what this video is really about. There are huge and far-reaching changes happening in the world of economics, happening through the internet and happening in the fields of quantum computers and artificial intelligence. All of these things seem to be dovetailing into a global scenario which could come together at almost any tick of the clock. This merger really could mark a tragic and extremely cruel end to life as we now know it. In some places, that end has already started. Sadly, if we have learned anything from the coronavirus, it is that the general public, national leaders, and even the greatest experts in the world still tend to deny reality when it becomes more comfortable for them, personally, to do so. Do you remember the start of the coronavirus? It wasn't just Donald Trump who was in denial. Even the World Health Organization was telling us that it is dangerous to wear a mask as protection against the virus. There is no specific evidence to suggest that the wearing of masks by the mass population has any particular benefit. In fact, there's some evidence to suggest the, the opposite. They were doing it at the same time that they themselves were buying up all the stocks of masks that were available. Instead of encouraging and instructing all of us in lockdown to make masks for ourselves and for our families and friends, the WHO let hundreds of thousands of people die before they announced, surprise, surprise, masks do help to protect you. And they said it like this was some revolutionary new breakthrough they had just discovered, even though there have been many past studies made on the efficacy of face masks in stopping the spread of other viruses. And they all concluded that masks are one of the best ways to combat such contagions. 
There are many more illustrations that I could give of the selfishness and short-sightedness of officials around the world throughout the whole pandemic. We all tend to only start acting when it is too late. That is the reality with regard to climate change too. Even climate experts and the most ardent political activists continue to tell themselves that they can buy Tesla cars, own big houses with swimming pools and fly around the world as long as they stage protests against coal mines on the weekends and use cloth bags when shopping. The whole world is in denial about just how serious the problem is and just how many comforts we need to live without in order to stop the rot. So now we have all the radical changes in technology that are needed for a very literal 1984 scenario over the whole globe, yet almost nothing is being done about it. Unfortunately, it is probably already too late to stop what is coming politically. And that is what I was getting at in my introduction. The end of the world has always been about something that might happen. Out there, sometime after most of us are dead and gone. At worst, our grandchildren might be seriously affected. But now, we're starting to witness clear indicators of the greatest global disaster to ever hit the human race. And no one has an answer. If you can get the experts to speak up at all, they only confirm that it is unavoidable. Our only refuge, it seems, is denial. The end of the world is upon us. Yet now, when it is most certain, no one dares to say it. Control of artificial intelligence is as simple as getting control of quantum computers. Just add a worldwide digital identification system and implantable microchips and the entire human race can be forced to run according to the dictates of the government or the dictator who is in control of the computers. Anyone who steps even the slightest bit out of line can be digitally erased as a consequence. We in the West want to believe that we will be the ones who will gain control and that we will use it wisely. But both points are far from guaranteed. I am convinced that we will never get control, but I am even more convinced that if we did, we would not use it wisely. What I read in Bible prophecy suggests that Russia and China are the ones who will soon gain control of the world. They will do it by destroying America, and by default, they will be able to subdue the other two permanent members on the UN Security Council along the way. China has already shown its willingness to totally dominate the lives of her own citizens. Millions of prisoners are being re-educated in prison camps where they are punished if they so much as open a door in the wrong way. The entire population lives in fear of offending the Chinese Communist Party's computerized social credit system, which monitors everyone in the world's biggest and most populous country. Millions of Falun Gong practitioners in China have angered the government sufficiently that they have been literally rounded up by their millions and tortured to death by the tens of thousands. Yet no one dares to question it. Not just in China, but around the world. That is reality. It is not a prediction about what will happen a few years from now, though we can be pretty sure that things will not be getting better for the rest of us. For millions of people living in China, the end of the world is happening today. The rest of our leaders have already been cowed into virtual silence about what is going on in China. The media is already powerless. For the most part, the US has already fallen. And China is already calling the shots in Asia, in Africa and in the islands of the Pacific. China now imposes the kinds of sanctions on the West that the West used to impose on recalcitrant dictatorships in other countries. We are well and truly under her thumb. The dragon has awakened, while the rest of the world has gone to sleep. 
and things like computerized killer drones directed to their targets by a universal identification system that weeds out so-called undesirables, such things will become the new norm over the next few years. We will all learn to move in sync with the most evil and the most cruel dictatorship that the world has ever known. Am I speaking this on the basis of what I've been reading in the news? Or am I speaking this on the basis of what I've read in the Bible? My answer is both. Prophecy is being fulfilled right before our eyes. And it's not just religious people who are saying that it could mark the end of civilization as we now know it. I think people should be really concerned about it. AI is a fundamental risk to the existence of human civilization. And I don't think people fully appreciate that. I do think we have to worry about it. I don't think it's inherent that as we create uh, super intelligence that it will necessarily always have the same goals in mind that we do. I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. The end of the human race. But some are talking about such an end as though it is a good thing. When you look at bees and fish moving, it looks like a single organism. Birds flock and bees swarm and fish school. They make decisions that are in the best interest of the whole population by thinking together as this larger mind. And we humans could do the same thing. So what are the rest of us doing about it? Those of us who are not convinced that merging with this new world order is going to be the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Well, some are muttering to themselves about NASA being the bad guys. NASA, they say, is hiding the truth from us that would save the world if only we could get it out. And what is this great truth that we all need to know in order to find salvation? It is, they say, that the Earth is flat. It's not a globe at all. And the sun is just a big light moving around the dome above us. <sighs> God help us. Others are saying that all the problems in the world have come because people don't spell the name of Jesus correctly. Or because people go to church on the wrong day of the week. Then there are those who say that the only escape is to stop getting vaccinations against various diseases. Can you see the denial in all of this? They all know that something bad is going on. They all sense the very real impending doom, but they reveal their collective ignorance about what to do through pointless, ridiculous, and irrelevant conspiracy theories and through equally meaningless solutions. Once again, such insanity is not restricted to the lunatic fringe. Scientific experts are also in denial, though they express it in somewhat different ways. Recently, I watched a video called We Need to Talk About AI. It includes a vast array of scientists talking about how one day, 50 or 100 or maybe even a thousand years from now, mankind will have succeeded in creating a form of life that is superior to humans. This new life form called AGI, which stands for Artificial General Intelligence, will replace us in some kind of evolutionary scenario where we do the right thing and hand control over to this imaginary and supposedly superior creation that we, the inferior creation, made without any help from God. I have some colleagues who are fine with AI taking over and even causing human extinction as long as we feel that those AIs are our worthy ancestors. There is still beauty and grandeur and greatness in realizing that you are a tiny part of a much grander scheme which is leading the universe from lower complexity towards higher complexity. We may just be here to just give birth to the child of this, of this machine, machine civilization. Maybe viewed from the point of view of the universe, it's a better universe with, uh, with our super intelligent descendants. When you strip away all the exaggerations about what little we have really achieved by comparison to what God did on day one of creation, 
the entire video and all the scientists quoted in it really did sound as ridiculous as the flat earth theorists. Some guy made a virtual doll on a computer screen. It wasn't even three dimensional, but he had programmed it to make certain facial expressions in response to visual stimuli. And he had convinced himself that he had created a computerized child, one that could learn and grow and one day experience real emotions. Worse still, the producers of the video were taking him seriously. But there was one overwhelming truth whispered in the documentary. About two thirds of the way through that wide ranging educational video on what is being done in the field of artificial intelligence today, the real threat was touched on and then dropped as soon as it was mentioned. The thing that scares me the most is this AI will become the product of its parents. Let's ask who those parents are, right? Chances are they're either gonna be military parents or they're gonna be business parents. If they're business parents, they're asking the AI to become something that can make a lot of money. So they're teaching it greed. Military parents are gonna teach it to kill first country or company to get there has the winner-take-all advantage. With folks like Putin and the Chinese saying, whoever dominates AI is gonna dominate the economy in the 21st century. I don't think we have a choice to put the brakes on. But still, the video ended with viewers thinking that the real threat is that computers are going to turn on us and destroy the human race many years from now. Mankind actually destroying itself through the use of artificial intelligence had already been forgotten, even though it had been touched on a few minutes earlier in the video. While we continue to ignore what we humans have done with virtually every new discovery we have made, no one will think further than praise for mankind and the imaginary paradise that we can supposedly make and achieve for ourselves. Yet. God, the creator of all that we see around us and all that we see in space. God has a plan for the world, one that he can make work. He has predicted what is happening and the prophecies promise that at the lowest point in this present scenario, the creator himself will intervene, choosing to destroy those who have been destroying the planet through insatiable greed and war and bringing a whole new dimension to our existence as we now know it. The end of the world as we now know it will mark the beginning of a better world than what we now know. A world of eternal love and perfect justice, ruled by a tiny handful of people who were able to stop their greed and war long enough to listen to their creator and to listen to his son, Jesus. We are calling on people everywhere, and especially people who have been claiming to be followers of Jesus, to actually listen to him, to believe what he has said, and to start living their lives in obedience to his teachings. Won't you join us in sharing this good news about an eternal heavenly kingdom that can also start in each of our hearts right now? If you would like to be a part of this heavenly new world, and if you've heard enough from Jesus to know that he does indeed have the answer, just write to the address on the screen and share something about your own spiritual journey. Let us know what country you live in and tell us which other videos you have seen from this channel. Thank you and God bless you as we seek together to build this eternal new world, a world without end. Amen.